And in order to get ready, there's no better way than watching Omni-Man beat up his son, Invincible. <laughs> isn't it crazy that Omni-Man isn't even the strongest one in this universe? Yeah, people who don't read the comics like... Just wait. See, we have all three compendiums between me and Aaron's side of the table. Welcome to Backseat Directing, where we talk about movies, TV shows, comics, and more. We're your hosts, Andrew and Aaron, and we put out new episodes every Monday and Thursday. And on this episode, we're doing a Omni-Man vs. Invincible reaction. Three, two, one, action. Andrew, tomorrow, Invincible Season 2 finally comes out. We've been waiting what seems to be like 20 years for this. And in order to get ready, there's no better way than watching Omni-Man beat up his son, Invincible. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to watch this fight. It's the last fight of Season 1, so if you haven't seen Season 1, don't watch this. Go watch Season 1. What are you doing? Uh, there's going to be some spoilers, obviously, for season one. Do you think we'll get into any spoilers for season two? Or do you want to like keep it broad? If we do, we'll warn before we're, we mention them. But we're going to react to the fight. And then afterwards, I have a little bit to talk about related to the comics. Um, this is what I have in mind goes as far as season one. And we'll make sure to war spoiler warning if it goes into season two. All right. You ready to just jump right into it? Let's do it. All right. Here we go. She's like a pet to me. What makes this fight so good is the in, the reaction of the environment to the fight. Yeah. The choreography and everything is good. The like, this is bloodshot eyes right now because he's been fighting um, Immortal and like the Kaiju, like been blasted by Cecil. Like, there's a lot of elements of detail, but what makes it really, really good to me is the environment's reaction. Like that punch right there, the trees in the background are shaking yeah. from distant trees from like... Don't do this! It's not too late! Yes, it is. The voice acting and dialogue is also such a strike for the fight. Yeah, that was going to be the point that I brought up. Even in the comics, the dialogue is like really good during fights and it keeps you engaged, you know? I don't care if I live a fucking million years! <laughs> this is my home! to value them over your own kind. Now, now, now. He literally has the capability to like reposition himself midair with his flight. Like Omni Man must be throwing him so hard for him not to be able to react to it. Yeah. Dude, even the sound of JK Simmons breathing right this <laughs> like a rumbling growl. He's perfect for the role. Yeah. Any voice acting role, I'll cast J.K. Simmons. I don't care if it's like for a six-year-old girl. His voice is he's just cool. I love his voice stuff. So. Yeah, he'd make it work. Isn't it crazy that Omni-Man isn't even the strongest one in this universe? Yeah, people who don't read the comics like just wait. That's what just this, wait. You're in for something right now. That's literally what made me read the comics. Was I was super hyped watching. This is like some of that was looked like it was CG animation, didn't it? Um, with the people running. But I was literally so hyped after watching season one, and then I think I was on TikTok, and I saw a video. I clicked on the comments, and somebody said, "Wow, people don't people watching the show don't even know about Thrag yet." And I went. Damn it! Who's Thrag? <laughs> I have to know. Thrag, yeah. thrag or th Throg or however you want to read it. But um, I've always pronounced it in my head as Thrag. It sounds so much better yeah. to me. Yeah. But I've heard people say it the other way. Um, I've heard it both ways. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You know. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's literally why I read it. Because I was like, I have to know about what happens. Another <laughs> awesome part, too, about this fight is that it is very close rep represented from the comics. 
You know, like they, they travel to like all the different locations that they been punched through in the comics. And they just literally brought the pages to life, which is really cool. But they expand on it a lot too and improve yeah. on it. Like the dialogue isn't isn't in there as much. The uh, the scene with the whole helicopter pilot that kind of like highlights the difference in mentality between Omni Man seeing humans as like this is right out of the comic. Yeah. Going to the depths of the sea. But they add a lot more to it. Like the the portion that has little punches. The portion with the subway in the comics is literally like he smashes him into the top of a subway. Mm -hmm. And they add this like element of him literally using Invincible's face as a mechanism of injury to all these people he's killing. Like it's so much more like stepping on what Invincible believes in to use him to kill people. Yeah. And the and and to the the part with the pilot I think is a big thing. This splitting the mountain is right in there. But yeah, the, the pilot scene adds so much. I mean, it's really like a one person one on one example of Invincible like doing whatever he can to save one, save that one life, and Omni Man just swats him aside like a fly. Mm -hmm. What we're watching is a cut-down version of it. It's skipping a lot of the dialogue, it's skipping more of the details of the fight, it's skipping the flashback that Omni-Man has that makes him change his mind. But this is like our super cut version to watch. Right. It still has a lot of what makes it great, but the actual fight is like 25 minutes or something crazy like that. It's like, and then if you count him fighting the giant monster and Quest and stuff, yeah. like, it's the fight so spans so long, yeah. So I think episode 7 ends with him putting his hand through a mortal and then episode 8 starts with him talking with Mark a mortal had him on the ropes kind of too which I know is probably just for plot reasons mm -hmm. but a mortal was really like throwing hands with Omni-Man for a minute there yeah and then from this part this is when Omni-Man leaves and for the first time watching it's like oh no is he going to come back what's happening but we know what's going to happen and I'm, I'm curious to see how much they keep in the show. Yeah, I think that, like we've talked about a ton of times, they do a great job of improving. And that brings me to what I said I want to talk about with the comics. So if you're watching on video, you can see we have all three compendiums between me and Aaron's side of the table. Um, Aaron has the best one. Agreed. But so that's number two in the first compendium. Basically, it's a little confusing to describe, but Omni Man actually leaves Earth in like issue 13 of the so, like, that would be right around if you're looking right around here. And this is the first of three books. There's 144 issues, so that's crazy. <laughs> so, and in, in, in issue 13, he's already gone, but issue 11, uh, well, is that, let, is that the fight? So, issue 10 is where he kills the mortal mm -hmm. and then issue 11 is where he has he explains the backstory of the viltrumites while talking to mark and then issue 12 is the fight that we just watched it's one issue fight and then issue 13 he's left earth so the the, the issue 13 starts with mark mark like at mount everest just bloodied and mm. and completely destroyed so it's literally a one issue fight and i can flip issues to, about 25 24 pages but it comes across really short, so I'm flipping across some of it here. But you can see, you'll, you'll see them travel to all the different environments. He punches them right into the city, which we see. They go from there to the subway. Um, they go through the air to the ocean, like Aaron said, Mount Everest. And that's that's the fight in a nutshell in the comics. I mean, it's it's over in an instant. They really expanded on it and proved on, on it for television, I think. Yeah. It the story moves pretty fast in the comment Life comics moves pretty fast and then I look around once in a while, <laughs> but it also goes fast but in a slightly different order in the show. Yeah, because like it the next issues after this is like the Aquarius arc where he goes to find the person who's taken over like their version of Atlantis, and I think we're gonna see that in season two of the show. So um, that's almost kind of in order, but then to like the flip side of the coin, like you're saying, you've got. A couple issues after that, you've got the in, the the very introduction of the um, Reanimen, mm -hmm. which is we see in season one at the college. That's those um, like android men yeah. that are being experimented on by what's his name the the uh, science science guy yeah 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 <laughs> uh, the real nerdy science guy yep. who is very evil and and then you've got the 
the sequids and you've got the those time traveling um not the time travel, but like the, the the aliens that move through time differently. Yeah, and we see them in like episode two. But yeah, I like think two like or three or something. Early. Yeah, so everything's super reordered. Yeah. Um. So like, just uh, that, think, that just shows the difference. I think Omni Man kills the Guardians of the Globe in issue seven. He kills them in like one page. Yeah. It's literally a pa one page reveal. They're all like dead, scattered on the ground. They show. I think in the comics they show a mortal talking to him, and he's like. He's like, oh, like, I thought we could trust you. And then he cuts his head off. And he's like, I never liked you. Oh, no, Immortal says, I never liked you. And then I think that Omni-Man says the feeling's mutual and, like, beheads him. And then that that's all you see. Like, it's... And then they turned it into this epic fight. Right. And they did so in episode one. They started it off, like, right away. And I think I, I watched an, ep uh, an interview with Robert Kirkman, the, the author, of Invincible, and he was saying that he was going to have Omni Man turn even later, and that his publisher or something like talked him into doing it sooner in issue seven. It's like that was a good suggestion because it definitely like keeps Absolutely. you going, keeps you interested even sooner. And it it's crazy because this story spanned across what twenty years of yeah. real life of him editing or writing this story. Like, could you imagine writing one story for that long and having to keep everything straight like how much did he plan ahead how you know like how do you keep track of everything i think was it 20 years i think so because didn't it come out in what like 2001 2002 uh, 2001 sounds right wow that's uh this i know it was a long time i don't know man this i this is the perfect thing to get hyped for the next season i hope like i hope everyone's re-watching invincible season one right now the adam eve special is so good it and was so good literally friday november 3rd tomorrow we are getting freaking first episode of invincible so season two so pumped i've been waiting for so long i wish it was 10 hours long this came season one came on what was it 2021 yeah, 2021, I believe. Yeah, so yeah. 2023. And then we're promised a lower wait time in between seasons two and three because... So they say. They greenlit the two seasons automatically. Yeah, so they say. I, I feel like I've, ne I've never hear that. And Invincible season one was so popular that they greenlit season two and three right away. That is pretty crazy. Uh, normally, it's what, until like you get to season three, then they like really decide to keep going or not. But yeah, to get both at once, that helps... Uh, are we supposed to get eight episodes for this season? Yes. Eight episodes. Four and four with the break. <sighs> That's the worst thing. <laughs> When's the break over? So we get it November 3rd. And so all of November. We have, then we, So I think we have a break into January. To January? I think oh, basically so we have a break through December, I believe. Because it wouldn't hurt to double check. Yeah, they didn't want uh, people to fall off during the holidays. I guess it's good for the show itself because then people are talking about the show being new for longer. So it does help for them in that sense. But for us, it does not. <laughs> yeah, I'm never, I'm not going to be able to find this fast enough. But unfortunately, there is a season break. But nevertheless, can't dull our enthusiasm. We're so excited for Invincible season two. Um, and I love that fight scene to death. It's one of my favorite fight scenes, literally of all time. Have yeah, we done a fight scene draft on the show. I think we did. We did a fight scene draft. I think it was like episode five and we, or something. We did with Zach, and this a fight was picked. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, either this one or no, this one was picked. It was over. Yeah. It was picked over the other one because I remember talk. I think I picked it. Yeah. I remember talking about how it's more emotional. Like the other fight's really good, but this one like plays on father and son dynamic, and there's a lot of yeah. dialogue. Yeah. But the other one's really like well animated fight too. Yeah. That that draft we had categories that we had to pick. So one of them was, was animation. Yeah, it was two movies, two shows, and one comic. So you had to draft a fight from each of those mediums. That was fun. That was a long time ago. We should do a throw or a redo of that. Yeah, the fight scene we did the, we did that back in the day before we ever were like doing a real podcast. Yeah, that one was fun. We should do that again. All right, down below, leave a comment of your favorite character in Invincible. What you're looking forward to most? If you've read the comics, if you haven't, what was your favorite part of season one? Any predictions for season two coming out tomorrow? Let us know. Let's have the conversation going down below. And uh, make sure you hit subscribe. We post new episodes every Monday and Thursday, and we've been doing so for well over a year now. Uh, thank you, everyone, for the support. And 
That's a wrap. 